18th, as we go before the Lord in Scripture, we are lifting up out of the book of Psalm, the 150th Psalm, and it reads, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts and praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet and praise him with the psaltery and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and the dance and praise him with strings, instruments, and organs. Praise him upon loud cymbals and praise him upon high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath, let everyone, glory to your name, that has breath, praise ye the Lord. Glory to your name, praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord. God, we glorify you and praise you this morning. We lift your name on high. to be adored. You are worthy to be lifted up. And your word declares when you are lifted up, you will draw all men and women unto you. When you are lifted up, you will heal those who are sick. When you are lifted up, you will make those who are blind to see. Now you can hear. God, we glorify you this morning. We praise you this morning. We feel your spirit in this place this morning. God, your word declares when you will pour out your spirit and they will prophesy. You will pour out your spirit on old men and they will have visions and you will pour out your spirit and young men will see visions and God we come this morning to receive an outpouring of your spirit. Glory to your name to receive an anointing that allows us to be able to lift up the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. God we praise you because we're prepared. We praise you because you deserve all the glory and the honor. God, we are ready. We are restored. And God, with your word, we will be revived. And so now God touched the man of God this morning. Strengthen him as he proclaims the good news of Jesus Christ to the tearing down of strongholds and the building up of your kingdom. God, we come for revival. We come for restoration so that your name is declared in all the earth. We pray for the man of God, the shepherd of this house. Touch Bishop Freeman right now from the crown of his head down to the sole of his feet, that he can continue to lead, guide, and direct your people to the fulfillment of your testimony, to the fulfillment of your word that says, Go ye therefore and preach to all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit so that your name is glorified and so that souls and set are saved and so that your name is lifted up. Now, God, touch each and every person in this sanctuary. Fill them afresh and anew so that they can hear a word that is specific for their lives so that we might be able to operate in the fulfillment of your destiny and purpose. It is in Jesus' name we say amen, amen, and amen.
you this morning. You may be seated in the presence of God. We greet you this morning on what is our college day as we prepare to rejoice and lift up the name of Jesus. It's specific because this is a time where if you look at the sanctuary, if you look at all of us who come in and worship, that there's a unique anointing on those who are our young people, those who are in college, those who are our teens. You can see them actually working in the kingdom at a very young age, and they're inquisitive. They genuinely have a heart for God and God's work. This is unique for us because we do see in the book of Joel, the, the second chapter, the 28th verse, and it says that God will pour out his spirit on all flesh. And it says that, that old men will dream dreams and young men will have vision. That our sons and that our daughters, that they will prophesy. This is unique for us that we give an opportunity and an ear to those who have taken up the gauntlet, lifted up the word of God so that it can be declared in all the earth. We are truly blessed this morning uh, to have one such yoke bearer, one such one who is lifting up the gospel of Jesus Christ. I won't do the introduction. I'll bring Bishop up as he gives our preliminary uh, instructions and remarks. But, but just know that the man of God is prepared to lift up a word that declares the good news of Jesus Christ to the tearing down of strongholds and to lifting up his, of his kingdom. We'll now have Bishop Freeman come up. Clap your hands, oh ye people, and shout for us triumph I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord for this is the day that the Lord has made we rejoice and we are glad in it thank you brother Sumter for taking us higher in the Lord and elders certainly uh, for the early acknowledgments there are a few announcements that we will share with you we have not shared those yet um, and then uh, following uh, the announcements I'm going to share a brief introduction for this young man that will share the lesson for uh, this college day early morning service. Now those who track along with us know that we are in a season entitled Restored, Revived, and Ready, coming out of uh, the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And this is a study of the book of the Revelation chapters two uh, and three, the seven churches of Asia Minor. Uh, today, I would invite you uh, just to consider uh, the church at Smyrna, the church at Smyrna. We're going to come back and we will walk through that lesson on Tuesday a good bit. But I will just say this, when you read about that second church at Smyrna, uh, historically they were known as a uh, small church under heavy persecution. Small church under heavy persecution. And yet, when Jesus sends a word to them through John the Revelator. Uh, he has no charge against them because they were faithful, focused, and fearless. Faithful, focused, and fearless. Their size did not matter. It was because they were faithful, focused, and fearless that we see this great church being the only church really that receives no admonition or challenge from Jesus the Christ of Nazareth. We're in a culture here in the West where bigger is better and might is right. And it's all about who's with us and who's on our side and how much we have. Look at this big campus. Look at all these members. Look at this. I got this technology and that technology. But what they remind us is that what the Lord requires of his anointed church is that they be focused, faithful, and fearless. Say that with me. Say focus, faithful, and fearless. The word Smyrna, in the middle of it, uh, Smyrna, 
It was called Smyrna, that region, because they were known for the myrrh that was made there. Smyrna, no, they were known for the myrrh. Myrrh is the sap of a tree that's used to anoint bodies. Jesus was anointed with myrrh. And, and, and that, that ought to be a lesson to us because sometimes we may personally feel like we're too small. We don't have enough things working in our favor. We didn't go to the right school, didn't grow up in the right neighborhood. But if you got the right thing on you, if you got the myrrh, got the anointing, the anointing gives you strength to be focused, faithful, and fearless. And I believe that the Lord is challenging us to remember that during this season, it's the anointing that makes the difference. Look at somebody and tell them the anointing makes the difference. The anointing. I'm grateful for all your achievements. I'm grateful for all the things that you have seen and have accomplished. But listen to me, I need to know, do you have a Smyrna anointing? Do you have something on you that'll protect you even when persecution comes against you? Do you have something in you that'll keep you even when folks reject you? Do you have that anointing on you? Are there any folks in here that can lift your hands and say, I'm revived, I'm restored, and I'm ready? And if you want to know why, it's because I got the anointing. I got the anointing. Hallelujah. And that anointing is what gives us strength to start in the back of a high school with a bar stool in the Bible. Because the saints of God were faithful and focused and fearless. The Lord continues to do mighty works through you. Now, I will, we'll talk a good bit more about that on Tuesday. Um, I want you to turn your attention to the screens for any additional highlights or announcements that we have, Brother Grant's gonna come and share those. And please take note of these highlights. How good and pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity, for where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Welcome to the Meeting Place Church of Greater Columbia Worship Experience. Our mission is to transform, equip, and empower the citizens of Columbia, South Carolina, and abroad to be a loving, productive people. This is your place, and these are your announcements. Join Bishop Freeman for live in-person prayer at the altar here at the Meeting Place Church of Greater Columbia, Wednesday at 7.30 a.m. First time visitors, we would love to stay connected with you. Text the word CONNECT to 803-667-3981. And if you're searching for a church home, we've got good news. Your search just might be over. Praying power gives you staying power. If you are not a part of our prayer call where we pray together Monday through Friday, seeking God for a fresh start to your day, we encourage you to be a part. You can get connected to our mobile ministry by texting TMPC for Life to 803-667-3981. We are blessed to have in partnership on our campus Food Share for the well-being in our community. If you think you can benefit from Food Share services, please visit their website foodsharesc.org Get the information you need to keep you in the know with what's going on in your church and your community Text TMPC for Life to 803-667-3981 New members breakfast and orientation will be held on Saturday, April 20th at 9am You may register at welcome.gotmpc.org if you or someone you know is a veteran and you are in need of benefits assistance, information is available. Meet with Deacon Noel on Saturday, April 27th, 2024 in the CMPC Community Center from 10 a.m. till 12 noon. Please bring a copy of your medical records and DD-214. You can get more details by emailing troopernoel at yahoo.com. Youth Sunday School is held every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. for elementary students in the upper room and middle schoolers in the community center. It's time to tell on Jesus. Send in your 90-second video to testify.gotmpc.org for testimony services held on Sunday, April 21st. This concludes this week's announcements from the Meeting Place Church of Greater Columbia. And now it's time for TMPC's Community Spotlight, where we share interesting and fascinating facts about impact made by the Meeting Place Church of Greater Columbia. Did you know the Meeting Place Church acquired a radio station in 2021? 
Columbia's Praise 95.7 FM and 1170 AM was birthed to TMPC on May 11th and reaches thousands of listeners across the state of South Carolina. What a blessing. Thank you, Meeting Place, and certainly to our leader, Bishop Eric J. Freeman, during this 25th year for setting legacy that's lasting. We continue to pray for you, sir, and the first family and Meeting Place. We continue to salute you for community impact. This has been your TMPC Community Spotlight. Well, come on and put those hands together and give God praise for community impact and all the announcements. Please govern yourselves accordingly, as the old saints would say. The elder uh, began to share, uh, as I was coming out, the wonderful witness of the young man that will lead us in our worship of the Lord through the receiving of his word this morning. Um, overjoyed with how the Lord continues to challenge and grow this next generation. I was uh, on the campus of the University of South Carolina Thursday for uh, Student Christian Fellowship and a Touch of Faith Gospel Choir. And they asked me to come and to share a word of encouragement doing revival. The, 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 uh, the students called revival at, uh, on the campus of the University of South Carolina. And I went there to give my little Sunday school speech. And um, as I was sharing the lesson, uh, these young people began pulling on the presence of God. And we began at 7.30. I think they almost had to walk us out of there. I mean, like literally just shut the lights off. One of the young men that was there helping us to pray through some of uh, these young ladies and young men that had come with an Ernest Harper revival. I saw him in the back, hands lifted and stretched and praying for those that were laid out on the altar and earnestly seeking the heart of God was none other than this dear brother, Brother Dean Gerald Jr. He is a high school graduate of the Mayo, I want to make sure I say this right, of the Mayo High for Math, Science, and Technology. He's a fourth year student, mechanical engineering at the University of South Carolina. Uh, he, is, he has a resume uh, that's more uh, diverse and uh, broad than even mine, so I won't even walk through all of his accomplishments. Just know that this young man um, is equipped both in head and in heart. He, um, he doesn't call himself a preacher. He hadn't been licensed or ordained or anything like that at all. But I will remind you that there was a young man not much older than this dear brother, who was one of the first deacons that was ordained. And uh, they didn't call him a preacher, but when he got called on, he knew how to preach about Jesus. And all of us are qualified if you got the Spirit of God in you to talk about Jesus. Am I right about it? For our 8 a.m. service, our official college day, and y'all look so good dressed in your different college paraphernalia, cheering on your favorite team, favorite school that your baby, your grandbaby, your cousin, them went to, the school you went to, your favorite fraternity, sorority, whatever it is. But on this 8 a.m., uh, at this, uh, in this 8 a.m. service for our annual college day, would you all help me um, by standing to receive uh, the voice that the Lord will use to speak a word of encouragement to us in the person of Brother Dean Gerald Jr.? when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord. If the Lord woke you up this morning, give him praise. If the Lord has given you function of all your limbs, give him praise. If the Lord has put breath in your lungs to give him praise, give him praise. I want to first give honor to the head of my life, my Lord, my Savior, for giving me the opportunity to stand before you all and to deliver his word. I thank the Lord that um, the word that he has given me has been given to me a while ago, and I thank the Lord that he's been preaching it to me and giving it to me bit by bit. And so 
whatever I give to you, know that he's preached it to me first. Um, I want to give honor to my bishop back home, Bishop Michael Anthony Blue, for uh, co-signing me coming up here and delivering to you all. Thank you. I want to also give thanks to Bishop Freeman for also giving me the opportunity for pouring into me, especially uh, the four years that I've been here at this college. Um, he's been nothing but a great leader and a great brother, so I thank God for him as well. And to the Meeting Place Church family, I thank you all for accepting me. I thank you all for pouring into me and accepting me as your own here as I've been here. Um, I've got nothing but high praises and all just God, but I thank you that you all have saw something great in me and I thank you for doing that. So thank you all. And last but not least, I want to give thanks to my beautiful mother sitting right here who has come to see me preach. And I know it's pulling on her heartstrings to see me up here, but she made sure to see her baby. So I thank you. Thank you, Mama. Please bow your heads and turn your hearts to God as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, Father. I thank you for the peace that surpasses all understanding, Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that you forgive us of all of our sins, everything that is done that we shouldn't have, Father God, everything that is unlike you, Father. Please cleanse us, Father God, creating us a new heart daily and renew the right spirit within us, Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that you've placed a purpose within each of us, Jesus, and I thank you that you see it through, Jesus. I thank you, Father, for removing every distraction. I thank you for removing every attack of the enemy, every intent of the enemy, and I rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that your word is spoken true, Father. I thank you that your word, Father God, convicts and empowers your people on today, Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that as you have me stand here, Jesus, that you make me worthy a vessel for your truth, Jesus. That, Father God, not my words are spoken, but that your Holy Spirit, Father God, speaks through me, Jesus, on today. We thank you for these things, Jesus. We thank you that your spirit fall in a mighty way, Father. That your people receive you, Jesus, in their hearts, Father, in a way that they've never seen before. We thank you for these things. In your name we pray. Amen. This lesson was given to me, like I said, by the Lord a while ago, and I had no idea um, exactly what he was going to do with this. I was sitting on my bed on a random day in the summertime, and I was reading, and he decided that today was the day that he was just going to take it all the way to the very top. And it was something unimaginable, something that I wasn't expecting to happen, but it was nothing but influence, and I had notes. And so, um, not too long ago, Bishop Blue had given me a call and told me that he would like for me to be on his prayer call with him. And so I said, of course, you know, anything my bishop calls me, I'm going to be ready to do. Um, but I had no idea what I was going to prepare. But the Lord brought me back to those notes that I've had. And I thank him that he, he saw forward and he doesn't constrain himself by time at all. So he knew that there was going to be a day that this was going to be important. Um, Whenever I prepare for this day, he's been speaking to me in a manner that I've been yearning for for a while. And it's nothing like hearing the Lord, but hearing the Lord as much as I have these past couple of weeks have been amazing. Um, to the point where it didn't matter where I was or what I was doing, I could be in class and I'm hearing him. And I'm like, okay, Lord, let me come over here and type something real quick. And I'm over here doing something else. And I'm like, okay, Lord, yeah, I got you. Let me go ahead and type something right here. But it's amazing. And um, throughout this lesson, you'll find that I use analogies. It's one of my favorite methods of explanation. And it's too efficient not to use, so it helps paint the picture very well. So just be on the lookout for those. And I can also be a little churchy. You could thank that woman right there for that. But uh, uh, I say that to say, if you think that there's a moment that you can say amen, go ahead and say amen, because I'm not going to ask you to say it. I'm going to just try to keep myself under the drippings of the Lord. So bear with me. But. This lesson is a lesson on lifestyle. So hear what the Lord has given both you and I so that we as a church family can be a community and we can walk in power, peace, and prosperity. The reading and inspiration for this lesson comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20, and it reads, What? Know ye not that the body of the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now, the title of today's message will be entitled, Keeping Your Temple Clean. And I want you to point or raise your hand towards your neighbor and tell them to keep their temple clean. 
Say it again. Tell them to keep your temple clean. So for the context of what we just read of chapter 6, Paul is addressing the church in Corinth about some serious issues pertaining to the government authority and their tolerance for sin. But ultimately, oh yeah, I'm sorry, y'all got you can be seated. <laughs> um, but yes, um, not ultimately, he's condemning them for what they have done and how they've been upholding themselves. Um, notice a tone in the reading, because it's a question. He says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? He's asking them a genuine question. At this point, basically asking, have you forgotten who you are? Have you lost your mind? A question meant to invoke self-evaluation, and this is exactly what he needed them to do. He wants to remind them that they are not like those outside of the church, that you guys are not like out those, those outside of the church. Know that the wicked and the unrighteous would not inherit God's kingdom. And Paul, as a loving and caring member of the body of Christ, wants the exact opposite of that for them. How many people in here can say that they have someone in their life, whether it be family or friend, who would tell you about yourself and say, come here, did you forget who you are? I know my mother, and I'm going to point to her a lot because this is the woman who really made sure that she brought me up in the word of God, and I don't want to put the spotlight on her too much, but I don't want to give her her credit. But one of her favorite sayings, whether I was coming or going, was that keep God first and remember who you are and that he's always watching. Now, the way she said that changed based on the context of what I did to make her say that, but I'm proud to say that she made sure I knew. But Paul is basically telling them that what you're indulging in is not of God. This mindset, this behavior is not befitting of the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. We often want God to do a mighty work in our lives, and we should. I know personally, I constantly think of what could be done better, what could be done differently as it pertains to my walk with Christ. Due to the fact that I'm tasked, and we are tasked with glorifying God in my body and spirit, we all have been taught this, especially if you've been under the leadership of this great church here. We as followers of Christ are held to a higher standard because we know God wants more from us and has a demand for greatness in our lives. The scripture said that we are bought with a price and my God is not an irresponsible consumer. My God has a plan for his investments and that is you and I. If we want God to do a great work in our lives, we must give him a clean workplace to work. That's where the idea of a temple comes in. Understanding that correlation of a temple to our body is very crucial. I promise we all seen a room or a house that's so messy that you can hardly walk in. You can't open a door. You don't even know where anything is. You can't find the thing that you put it because you didn't put it where you had it. And it makes sense that you rather want to stay at the doorway and just say something from the door. Or if you want to bring something in, you might just leave it at the door. But you get the point. Until that room is clean, an intimate conversation cannot be had. An intimate conversation is difficult and there's no room for new things. But I thank God for Revelations chapter 3 and verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and I will sup with him and he with me. I know God would want to have the space to walk in my temple and be the interior designer that he designs to be. The ideas, the traits and habits that contradict his teaching and guidance must be done away with. We need to keep our temple clean. For this vessel is not ours alone. So if you're thinking about this body is to do whatever you want to do with, you'd be wrong. This life is not yours either. It belongs to a God who has entrusted you to fulfill it with his purpose in your story for his glory, as we just read. Now, I was led by God to three different ways to ensure that we keep our temple clean. The first being to upkeep, which means to maintain in good condition. The second is to uphold, which means to support. And the last is to appraise, which means to raise to a higher level. Forgive me, I'm a man of punctuality and I have alarms all day long. <laughs> but to the first point, to upkeep. This means to maintain your mind, your body, and soul in good condition for his use. This means that you can't just clean it one time and think that that's going to suffice. This is a daily commitment, just as we should acknowledge God with our first breath each morning instead of grabbing for our phones. That's the type of dedication you need when it comes to upkeeping your temple. Because we fall short of his glory, and we all do, and his mercies renew every morning. So guess what? As an omnipotent God, he knew that we would need to clean our temples daily. 
It's not often that our rooms or houses stay clean just from one session. And let me know if I'm wrong, but it's highly unlikely that you find everything in that one time that you go through and clean it. There's going to be things that you miss. There's going to be things you didn't know that you need to get rid of. Things that you thought you've done away with, but it's still found its way there. Things that hold on to trauma and memories that have kept you bound. There's been days where I come back from class and I throw my book bag off, I throw my shoes off, I throw everything off, and I don't care if I got my outside clothes on, I'm gonna jump in my bed and take a nap. But when that happens, I cause clutter. And I know that I found, and I know something found at a place in your tipper that should have never been in there in the first place should not have been there. But when you let enough build up, it becomes clutter, it becomes a mess, it becomes rather noticeable. But when we don't always know how to get rid of it. But don't we know that God cleans messes? Don't we know that God has a better service than Stanley Steamer? Don't we know that God cleans better and disinfects better than Lysol and bleach? We know this to be the blood of the Lamb of God that was shed for our sins. We know that it washes away all sins and infirmity that we may be made whole and receive everlasting life. And it's not just going to reach to the highest mountain or the lowest valley. It's going to reach and clean every corner of that temple through prayer, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, which availeth much, and repentance, which is the turning away from ungodliness. This is how we keep our temples clean. This is how we upkeep our temples. Keeping our minds stayed on him, making our father's business our business, his thoughts our thoughts which leads us to the next point, which is uphold, which means to support his mission and his purpose. Now, I'm an engineering major, so this means I'm a nerd, but I'm a cool nerd, right? And cool nerds make money, so don't, don't downplay it too much. But this doesn't mean that I'm gonna throw some crazy numbers or equations at you, so you don't have to worry about that. But in my engineering ethics class, which focuses on the engineering thought process and the ethical values we as engineers hold in our profession, I was given the assignment to analyze the 9-11 attack. And of course, there were decisions made by the engineering management and leadership that contributed to the destruction of those towers. But listen to what I'm about to explain next. It was stated that the hijackers flew the aircraft into the lowest part of the buildings that they had access to. And according to that preliminary analysis, the impact of the jetliners shattered and fractured two thirds of the support and caused the collapse of several floors penetrating each building's core. However, the damaged columns held up the weight of the building, so logic would dictate that that building will fall, right? But that did not happen because of its great structural redundancy. That load was distributed to other parts of the building, and we have reason to believe that without the jet fuel, the buildings would not have been standing. So this brings me to another scripture, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 21. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints in the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, yeah. in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into what a holy temple of the Lord. So I'll say all this to say, for your temple to be structurally sound, you ought to be grounded spiritually and consecrate yourself in the word of God. So understand the importance of support and what that means as it relates to upholding God's mission and his purpose for your life and keeping your temple clean. And we know this in a, a very familiar story called The Three Little Pigs. We know that the first little pig had a house full of straw and he thought that that was going to be enough. But see, the wolf came and blew that down without any, you know, uh, restraint or any resistance. We know that the second pig had a house full of sticks and we thought that we could pick God every other day and say that's going to be enough and that's going to hold me up. And see that wasn't enough. But we know the third pig loved the Lord and consecrated himself and prayed and he built it upon his mission and his support and his values. And we thank God that that house was built by the Lord and it was up kept and it was supported. I promise you I'm speaking from experience but when you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness then what? All these things shall be added unto you. And we know that these things well, can be a combination of different things for us. Your heavenly Father knoweth, hey, Matthew 6, it says that you have need of all these things. And if you want to see your life turn around for the better, you have to uphold his mission and his purpose and see how he blows your mind. These things can be your grades turning around for us college students. This can be the future of your career brightening. This can be your needs being met, your heart being made content, the healing and peace that you've longed for, clarity, Jesus said all of these things. Had it not been for that fire, the World Trade Center support would not have fallen. 
without that firm foundation, you could stumble and fall. The walls in your temple can begin to weaken and crumble. And as for myself, that's where I get frustrated. That's whenever I start making mistakes that I shouldn't have and tripping about things that I thought I gotten over and forgetting what the word of the Lord says and forgetting what his plans were for me and forgetting who I was called to be and who I was called to be and how he brought me out time and time again. And I know there's everyone out here who could raise their hands and say that the Lord has brought them out of many things and that he's done all these things for you and that you've been told by many people that you are called to be who God called you to be. And so you need to remember that. These things are attributed to the reinforcement of your support. And to do that, we have to continue to uphold his mission and purpose. You have to be consistent and intentional and walk in that straight and narrow path that Jesus paved for us. If you aren't practicing righteousness and being diligent in the word, then all the hard work you've done to get to that point would be in vain. And it won't be God's fault. His word does not return in vain or void, I'm sorry. And that's not how that works. It'll be your efforts, but God is a redeemer. Every great prophet, apostle, and leader used by God was not walking perfectly every step of the way. And Lord knows if that was the case, I wouldn't be standing before you all here today. But it's not our own doing that makes us strikes but it's in his sight and his love that makes it possible for him to lift up his countenance towards you. And this means that looking on us for our good because he wants to bless us, he wants to see you win. He doesn't task us with keeping our temple clean for any ill will or detrimental means. It will take you trying for yourself to truly see the benefits. And only then can you have that personal experience and relationship that you want, that I wanted with God to do what he wants to do. And a gospel is designed to do just that. And this leads me to my last and final point. I didn't say it at the beginning, but I promise I won't be here long. But it's to appraise. And this means to improve upon so that he can upgrade your life and trust you with more so that you can do more. When seeking God, there's this thing called a zeal, and with that comes a hunger for more of him, a desire to be more like him, to do more and to do better. As you look to improve upon yourself, that will often follow if those first two things are done, that first thing being what to upkeep, that second thing being what to uphold. So when your temple is clean, you're upholding God's mission and purpose and his principles. Now God is excited. He gets to be the interior designer that he wants to be, and sometimes it's difficult but if you seek to be appraised, you have to trust him. He might say that that 75 inch 4K television gotta go and you have to trust him. He might say that that mindset that you have for a while that's been causing you to be uh, blind and deaf to what he's been trying to say to you has to go and you have to trust him. He also gets to remove that trauma, that hurt and those chains that have bound you up from being who he called you to be and reaching the goals. And as he does this, your life will improve and you'll be taken to the next level. And it will be subtle at some moments, but watch your interactions change. Watch the people you keep around you change. Watch your thoughts change. Watch your speech change. Watch the music you listen to change. And the beautiful gifts that you see exercised in the great leaders of our church assembly and the body of Christ as a whole is not attributed to anything they've done because as Bishop Freeman said one Sunday, your identity is not rooted in the gift, but the gift giver. David is a great king that we all know and love, but he wouldn't be a great king if he wasn't upholding God's mission and purpose when he was shepherding sheep. He couldn't uphold God's mission and purpose if he didn't have a heart after his own heart. And the Bible scholars in the congregation know that because David did these things, God appraised him and made him king, correct? Yeah. When you reach this point, you can't possibly contain your light from shining on other people. God will have that temple wide open with all the blinds raised and the curtains open. People will start to ask you questions, go to you for advice, and pick you for certain things over others because they see the hand of God on your life. You got to remember how he saves you. You got to remember how you turn it around for your good. Remember how he calls all these things to work together for your good. Keep that because it will humble you and cause you to have appreciation and continual reverence for him, and he will always honor that. This lifestyle of keeping your temple clean is not solely for you. God isn't linear, nor is he bound by time, as I previously said. It's been proven that the Bible has 63,779 cross-references. God has the plan, and he has the plan from the very beginning to the very end. And he intends and instructs us to spread his gospel so that others may experience the benefit of a clean temple. 
So keep your temple clean, not only so God can have an intimate conversation with you and drop off those lovely Amazon packages that are filled with the fruit of the spirit that will cause you to love and not hate, that causes you joy and not sorrow, that causes you peace and not chaos. Hallelujah. That causes you long suffering and not impatience, gentleness and not abrasiveness, gentleness, I'm sorry, goodness and not evil, faith and not doubt, meekness and not arrogance, and temperance and not a lack of self-discipline and control. All these things, as he said, but he also does this so that the tenants that are led to your doorstep are welcome to a place where they too can see the glory of God in our lives and be a witness. And I'm going to close with this. When you do these things, you become more sensitive to him. And a relationship you want with God becomes reality and opens the door for unimaginable amount of possibilities. Clean does, clean does not just mean free from dirt or stain, because that would logically only correlate to upkeeping your temple. But it also means pure. When you uphold, you keep your temple lifted up so that it doesn't meet the dirt below. But we could, because we know the support fails, that structure often follows. And to a praise, we cannot afford to live our lives at this level in this wicked world where sin and evil becomes more acceptable and normalized. We have to be ever so careful to adapt and upgrade ourselves in Jesus to stand against the wiles of the enemy who only wants to see your destruction because he knows and is afraid of what God will do with a clean temple. Your destiny, your well-being, your sanity, your family, your friends, they all depend on you to be that reflection of God's light in their lives. And no light is going to properly reflect off of a dirty mirror. So ask yourself today, is my temple clean? And according to Deuteronomy 28 and 13, the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. But there's a second clause, and it says, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which is to command this day, and to observe and do it there. So, Father, as I've done my best, Father God, to humble myself before you and deliver your word, I thank you, Father God, that every heart has received it, Father God, with your interpretation, your interpretation only. I thank you, Father God, that everybody in here has something, Father God, an expectation for you, Father God, to do an amazing work in their lives. I thank you, Father, that our mindsets are turned, Jesus, from every wicked way and every wicked thought and every old thought, Father God, that contradicts your way, your word. We thank you that your spirit be lifted up in us today, Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that the fruit of the spirit is seen evident, Father God, in our walk with you, Jesus. We thank you that we are remembered, Father God, of your sacrifice, and thank you, Father God, for placing in us a destiny, Father God, that ultimately brings glory to your kingdom, Jesus. We thank you for these things in your precious name, Lord, we pray and we say amen. Hallelujah. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary, sanctuary, Lord, do for you. I'll come to you. Sing with me. Lord, prepare me, that's it, to be a sanctuary. There we go. Thank you. Pure and holy. Come on, tried and true. Lift those hands and say, with thanksgiving, I'll be sanctuary. Lord, one more time, lift those voices and sing, Lord, breathe to be pure and holy, tried and true. And 
with I'll be Sanctuary Lord I can't let it go yet One more time Open your mouths and say Lord I want my temple clean Lord Pure and holy Tried and true Oh, well, thanks. I'll be sanctuary. Oh, if you've been blessed by the ministry of the word today by Brother Dean Gerald, come on and let's give God praise. Father, we thank you for this young man that has stood boldly on your word, challenged us to walk in the way of righteousness, to keep our temples clean. We receive the earnestness of the lesson that has been presented, the passion and the fervor with which it was presented. We receive it right now, God. We receive it with gratitude, and we express that gratitude by opening our mouths and saying, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your servant. Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for challenging us, Lord, to upkeep and uphold and upraise. And we receive it. We receive your word right now. We are your temples, and your Holy Spirit dwells in us. We confess that we have missed the mark and at times we have cluttered our lives. But we praise you that your word did not return back void. You said that Joel, through Joel, that you would pour out your spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. And we've heard a son prophesy and challenge us to prepare our temples, to prepare our sanctuaries, to be pure and holy, tried and true. And we confess we have missed the mark. Remove every place of clutter, God. Every distraction, Father, we pray you would remove it right now. Every imagination that would exalt itself against the knowledge of who you are. You made a promise in your word. If we stand on the foundation of Jesus the Christ, the chief cornerstone, uh, that you would pull it down. Uh, I thank you right now that somebody is being challenged uh, to have a cleaning session, a cleaning session, a cleaning session. We pray, God, as the psalmist pray Lord wash me and I shall be whiter than snow purge me with hyssop oh God create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit uh, within me now father I thank you for the refreshing I thank you for the refreshing we receive your word we receive it we receive it with gratitude we receive it uh, we open our mouths and we say thank you Lord we open our mouths and say thank you Lord with thanksgiving Lord we are living sanctuaries we open our mouths uh, and we say thank you Lord thank you for your Holy Ghost thank you for your Holy Ghost thank you for the blood of Jesus uh, thank you for the blood uh, that purifies us we heard the young prophet say that the blood that was shed uh, for the remission of our sins can clean up uh, whatever we're going through not only does it reach to the highest mountain uh, not only does it flow through the lowest valley uh, but the blood can reach us wherever we are and we come to say thank you Lord uh, we are your temples uh, we are your temples purge us uh, and clean us that we might be filled uh, with your glory and emanate your glory and all that we do it is in Jesus name we receive the word uh, and all the saints of God uh, as we even pray for this young man cover him now God we come against every hurt any hurt harm or danger that would dare draw nigh him cover his family cover his mother we pray strength to him, God, as a kingdom professional, that the same grace that he has here in the sanctuary, 
ministry. He'll have it in the secular as an engineer, as a professional. God, give him words and dreams and visions uh, that will pull down in strongholds and break uh, the fetters of iron. I pray right now, God, uh, that he will have a strong finish to his vocational uh, and professional uh, pre uh, preparation uh, at the University of South Carolina. I pray, God, uh, that you would open every door that needs to be open, that you would remove every impediment, uh, that you would give him clear passage, uh, and that, Father, he will never take glory unto himself. Uh, but even as he stood earnestly and humbly before your people and before you today, uh, that he will always lift the glory to you. Uh, I thank you for greater strength. Uh, I thank you for greater grace. Uh, and we call it God uh, in the name of Jesus. Shana. We call it God in Jesus' name. Uh, come on and put your hands together and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, prepare me to be a Pure and holy. Pure and holy. Tried and true. Tried and true. With, thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Lord, I will be a living. Be a living. Sanctuary. For you. Well, we're going to dismiss in just a moment, but before we do so, I want to make sure we have a saved house. I don't want to assume that just because you're in the house of the Lord, that your temple is, is clean. I don't want to make that assumption. In the book of Gospel of St. Luke, the 15th chapter, we find the parable of the lost and the found, the lost son, lost coin, the lost sheep. In the second portion of that parable, the lost coin, there was a coin that a lady lost in her house. Where did she lose the coin? In her house. Where was the coin lost? That means you could be in the house and still be lost I want to make sure there's no one in here that's in the house but still lost if you do not know that if you were to die today that you would be in the arms of Jesus if you never accepted the Lord Jesus Christ for the free pardon of your sins if it's not well with your soul if you have backslidden what that means is your temple's got cluttered. And you know that you're not walking in the fullness, the joy and the strength of God. If you don't have the foundation to uphold you, you don't have a church family. You know the church is the body of Jesus Christ who is the chief cornerstone. If you fall into any of those categories, I got good news for you. Today is the day of salvation. Need to give your life, need to recommit your life, need to join the church while every head is bowed, every eye is closed. If that's you, Brother Freeman, I need to recommit my life. I need to give my life to Christ. It's not well with my soul. I need a church family. If you fall into any of those three categories, let's embarrass the devil real quick and slip your hand in the air. I need to give my life, recommit my life while every head is bowed, every eye is closed. If I'm speaking to you, just raise that hand in the air. I need a church family. I see your hand. I see your hand. Anyone else? I need to give my life. I need to recommit my life. I need a church family. Anyone else? Those streaming via the internet, right where you are, the Lord is meeting you as he's meeting us at the meeting place. If that's you, lift your hand. Now, Father, I thank you for the hands that have been lifted. Thank you that right this very moment, you hear and heed their petition and the cry. Your word will never, ever return back void. You are a present help in the time of trouble. You said if we would confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus Christ, but not just speak it, but out of the conviction of our hearts, believe that Jesus is Lord, that we shall be saved. I thank you for hearing the cry of that dear daughter. And we stand in agreement 
we come alongside as family and community and we call it done but those that are joining need a church family we call it done those that are recommitting we call it done in Jesus name now those that have lifted your hands after I dismiss you I want you to go by there is in the lobby there is a guest services area someone will be there to meet you and to pray with you and also put something in your hand so if your hand was lifted uh, just make sure you go by guest services uh, we will have ambassadors there uh, to greet you we will not just simply pray with you but we're going to come and stand with you watch with you and believe for you amen in Jesus name let's give God praise come on come on Well, I'm getting closer to retirement every day. Uh, these young people leading and preaching like this, um, I, well, I won't have to hang around much longer. I, I'm going to just sit out there and just let y'all do all the teaching and preaching. Amen. But uh, one more time, let's give God praise for this <laughs> tremendous gift. God bless you, sir. And certainly we thank God for his mother, God bless you, Mother. We thank God for you. And, and to all of the pastors, but especially my pastor, who um, has entrusted several of you come from Door of Hope when you come to this area, um, but to our, our presiding prelate for the Christian Covenant Fellowship of Ministries, my pastor, His Grace, the Honorable Bishop Michael Anthony Blue, Senior Bishop, we thank you, sir, for sharing this young man and all those that come to this region come to this region with us. Now, don't forget, today we have brunch at 1 o'clock, so I hope you'll come back and join us in the Banquet and Conference Center for brunch. Um, this brunch will be um, a brunch of champions, like the breakfast of champions. Um, I, it's come to my attention that this very same food that we're preparing back here, to share here, here at the meeting place, uh, that we will take a portion of that to our Lady Gamecocks as they are uh, preparing for their parade this afternoon. Amen. So we eating the food that belongs to champions. And um, I don't know about y'all, but I feel like I got me a national title ring, too. I know it was the meeting place anointing that helped them young ladies. Amen. So join us. Join us at 1 o'clock. Deacon Eddie, Deacon S. Levita Green, um, one of their babies over here is playing the drums. Brother Isaiah, Junior Deacon Isaiah Green over there playing the drums. Uh, catering and beyond. Come back at 1 o'clock. That's going to be a blessing. You're going to eat at 1, then you can run downtown at 2 to catch the parade, amen, uh, and then you can go home and rest for that good Sunday afternoon, uh, you know, you know, uh, refreshing, we'll just call it that, and uh, be ready for the, for the week ahead. Now, in the seat backs in front of you, worship isn't complete until we uh, bring an offering unto the Lord. In the seat backs in front of you, you'll find envelopes. For the tithing offering, if you're given by a cash or a check, you can also give electronically um, via Cash App, which is TMPC for Life, to our church website, themeetingplacechurch.org. You can text to give by texting the word give to 803 937 1920. For those that have Zelle in your particular banking app or your banking app, you can give via Zelle at info at gotmpc.org. Those who use the Givelify platform, you can find us on Givelify at the Meeting Place Church International. Let's uh, take this service to the next level by uh, bringing into the storehouse a tithe and an offering. We complete worship by bringing an offering unto the Lord, acknowledging that all things come of thee, O Lord. And it is our custom at the 8 a.m. service uh, that after we have received of the benediction, and to found a blessing and a blessing and thanksgiving for the tithe and the offering that as you are egressing uh, from uh, the sanctuary, uh, that you would uh, place your offering in the receptacles uh, that are available uh, at the exit of the sanctuary. Even if you give electronically, we do ask that you simply touch your device on the basket as a sign of agreement. Does that make sense? Amen. Amen. Don't forget Sunday school begins at 9.30. If you've got a young person, we do have Sunday school for our elementary, middle, and high school students um, in the upper room and also in the community center. So we encourage you to stay for Sunday school that begins at 9.30 a.m. Lift those hands with me. 
Father, we just marvel at all that you have done this morning. Thank you for meeting your people at the meeting place. Thank you for not leaving us without a word, but for bringing in a word of impartation, power, information, power. My God, we thank you for the revelation of your word. Thank you for the challenging dimensions of your word. Now we are more committed to upkeep and uphold and uppraise. We know, God, that in the Oxford American Dictionary, to uppraise means to go to another level. We have been challenged, oh God, to go to another level. We thank you that we are prepared, pure and holy, tried and true. We are living, living sanctuaries, living temples for you. Let your Holy Spirit emanate through us like never before. And now, Father, we pray that you bless the tithe and offering, that you would cause the seed to be fruitful, to multiply, replenish, subdue, and to have dominion. Now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace. Now, Elder, if you would take uh, young brother uh, Dean right down that center aisle before I say the final blessing I do want to encourage this young man trust me there's so many other voices that would do their best to disparage him but we call the devil a liar amen we, he will not be disheartened it's often when you go to the highest places that the enemy tries to hit you in the lowest place but we're going to cover and encourage him amen and so on your way out if you would just make sure you shake his hand encourage this young man I think he's 21 years old and he stood here like a 41-year-old young man, flat-footed, and declared, and he didn't get on no foolishness either. He preached the word, didn't he? Amen. Let's give God praise one more time in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, amen. God bless you. Go in peace.